the rule of taxation must be uniform, equitable, and progressive. Meron mo akong i-discuss sa inyo tungkol sa rule of taxation. Letter po ito galing kay BIR Chief Kim Henares. Tandaan niyo po yung tatlong prinsipyo na sinabi ko. Number one, uniform. Number two, equitable. And number three, progressive. Kwento ko lang po itong letter na ito. Sinasabi ko kay Kim na dapat ang lahat ng taxpayer ay may isang standard o format ng financial statements na isasubmit sa BIR para hindi magulo, para hindi maraming us usap-usapan. Isang format lang. Ang objective ko po ay mabawasan ang graft and corruption, maiwasan ang confusion, abuse, at yun pong uh, ignorance. Ano po? So, ito po yung sagot niya dun sa letter ko. June 6, 2012. Emelino T. Maestro, Laridel, Doña Aurora, Quezon City. Dear Mr. Maestro, This refers to your legal petition notice, LPN, dated March 12, 2012, regarding your intention to use the tax basis financial reports. According to your LPN, you raise the legal issue of the validity and enforceability of the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, procedural rule of adopting the finance, Philippine Financial Reporting Standard, TFRS, for large, medium, and small juridical persons or person. Ang pinag-uusapan, juridical, hindi po individual, ha? You also stated that under the said rule, those within the category of small and medium may use other than PFRS type of accounting system subject to its consent. And lastly, those classified under micro are given the option to prepare and issue financial reports under the income tax basis of accounting. It is your belief that the said SEC rule is contradictory to Republic Act 8424 implementing the National Internal Revenue Code of 1997, specifically Section 257B3 to it. Section 257, ito nakasulat, Penal liability for making false entries, records or reports of using or using falsified or fake accountable form. Letter B, any person who offers any taxpayer the use of accounting bookkeeping records for internal revenue purposes not in conformity with the requirement prescribed in this code or rules and regulations promulgated thereunder ay mapaparusahan po either ng penalty or makukulong. Pag-usapan mo natin, uulitin ko lang. Any person who offers any taxpayer the use of accounting bookkeeping records for internal revenue purposes. Not in conformity with the requirement prescribed in this code. Sabi rito, accounting bookkeeping records. Ito po yung posisyon ko. Yung accounting bookkeeping records na hindi in accordance with the tax code ay may penalty at mayroong criminal prosecution. Lagyan natin sa perspektibong madaling maintindihan. Rule, bawal pumatay. Bawal pumatay. So, kung bawal pumatay, hindi ka pwedeng pumatay. Kahit ano pang sistema ng pagpatay mo, bawal. 
Ngayon, ang sabi rito, bawal gumamit ng accounting record na hindi ino-authorize ng tax code. So, lahat ng accounting records na hindi ino-authorize ng tax code, kahit ano pa yan, kahit PFRS pa yan, o Philippine Financial Reporting Standard, kahit galing yan sa Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, bawal yan sa tax code. Naintindihan nyo ba? Pinagbabawal eh. Kahit yan ay dinikta ng Central Bank, bawal yan sa tax code kasi ang sabi ng tax code, yun lang ino-authorize ng tax code ang acceptable. Eh, ano yung acceptable? Accounting bookkeeping records na in accordance with the tax code. Hindi accordance kay Secretary of Finance o kaya kay BIR Commissioner o kaya sa Chairman ng SEC o Chairman ng Comelec. In accordance with the tax code. Maliwanag po yun. Ngayon, kung yung accounting bookkeeping mo ay in accordance with the tax code, at yan ay i-record mo sa books of accounts mo, definitely, yung books of accounts mo ay in accordance with the tax code. So, kung yung books of accounts mo ay in accordance with the tax code, eh di yung financial statement mo ay in accordance with the tax code. So, kung gagamit ka ng Philippine Financial Reporting Standard, eh yung pangalang pangalang pa lang, hindi na siya in accordance with the tax code eh. Dando doon po ang graft and corruption. Kaya pag nakita ng BIR officials na yung financial, statement, financial statements mo ay in accordance with the uh, in accordance with the uh, tawag nito Philippine Financial Record Philippine Financial Reporting Standard hindi na po pwede. Di ba? Yung po yun. So, sabi ni dito niya is, in conclusion, you stated that the income tax basis accounting should not be should not be limited to micro person. Referring to corporation po ito at saka partnership. But should be used by all taxpayer whether judicial or individual. Yun yung position ko. You also encourage the SEC Bureau of Internal Revenue and Department of Finance to come up with standard and uniform system in preparing financial statement. Inuulit ko lang po. Yung po yung batas. The rule of taxation must be uniform, equitable, and progressive. Ito yung sagot. Section 43 of the National Internal Revenue Code of 1997 slash uh, open close parenthesis tax code as amended, provides that the revenues and expenses of taxpayer for income tax purposes as the general as a general rule shall be determined based on accounting method employed by the said taxpayer. E ano ba yung accounting method? Ang pinag-uusapan dito, section 43. Tapos yung section 257. E mas mataas po yung section 257 sa section 43. Ganon po yun ha. Kasi... Those are repealed by subsequent one. Kung section 43 yan, pwede siyang i-repeal ng section 257 kahit pareho silang nasa Republic Act 8424. Thus, the adoption of the Philippine Financial Reporting Standard is not a violation of section 257B3. B o, oh, di, di mali na. Kapag gumamit ka ng PFRS, eh tax code ba yun? Yung PFRS ba eh, kasama sa tax code. Yung bang Philippine Financial Reporting Standard, nasa loob ng tax code. Di hindi, eh di mali na. In addition, even before the adoption of the PFRS, the BIR is aware that the generally accepted accounting principles, GAAP, and generally accepted auditing standards, GAAS, use as basis for recording financial transaction and preparation of financial statement may be different from the provision of the tax code and the rules and regulation issued for implementing the tax implementing the said tax code eh di alam niya na magkaiba so kung magkaiba siya di hindi siya in, not in conformity na kagad within ayun ako so, kung magkaiba ang tax code at PFRS, 
tax code yung pinagagamit eh. Bakit pinipilit mong PFRS ang gamitin? To deal with these differences, oh, the BIR issue Revenue Memorandum Circular Number 42-2002 and 22-2004, which provides that in case of differences between the provision of the tax code and its implementing rules and regulation, and that of the GAAP and GAAS, the provision of the tax code and the rules and, regu and, and, and the rules and regulation implementing the said tax code shall prevail. Imagine mo, pagagamitin ka ng GAAP, pagkatapos, ay sasabihin mali. Kung mali yun, magpe-prevail yung tax code. Bakit hindi na lang tayo dumiretso sa tax code? Para hindi wala ng dobling trabaho, tatrabahohin mo sa GAAP o PFRS, tapos tatrabahohin mo sa tax code. Di ba dobling gastos yan? Manpower, oras, at saka pera. Ano ka ba? For this purpose, the portion of... Ah, na, ito na. Okay. And that these this differences must be fully disclosed in the financial statement and or income tax return. Tingnan mo, dodoble trabaho kasi i-disclose mo. Bakit sila magkaiba? Pwede namang diretso, harmonious ka agad. Well, hindi ka na mag-iisip. Bakit nga ba nagkaiba? Ang talino mo. Matalino ka sa PFRS. Matalino ka pa sa tax code. Ma'am, sir, hindi nyo kailangan ng PFRS. CPA ho ako. Pagdating sa tax code, tax code period. Kung gusto mo na, ito may, may sinasabi sa tungkol sa PFRS. Eh. For this purpose, the portion of the income tax return intended for reconciling items shall always be properly accomplished. Wag, so, kita nyo, pinatatrabaho kayo ng sobra-sobra. Pwede hindi naman kayong mag-accomplish nun kung tax basis na ang gagamitin nyo. It should also be emphasized, ito maganda, that an organization's primary purpose in recognizing and recording income and expense is to report to the management, investor, creditors, and other stakeholders the financial position and performance of the business. Ours is to collect the correct amount of taxes to fund government operations, This difference, difference lead to variances oh, alam niyo na eh, in reporting of income and income and expenses for which a reconciliation is always required to arrive at the correct taxable base. Ito po mali po yung ano ha, mali yung sinasabi. Kasi sabi ho sa batas wala namang reconciliation eh, diretso ka na kagad gumamit ng tax code. Kasi ayaw ng batas na maghirap ka, madoble trabaho mo, madoble gastos mo, maubos ang oras mo. So, mali po yung sinasabi kaya ka gumagawa ng financial statement dahil para sa management, investor, creditors, and stockholders. Kulang! Kaya ka gumagawa ng financial statement kasi may obligation kang gumawa ng financial statement. At ang obligation na to ay na-derive from law. ba diba? pinagagawa ka ng law ng financial statement. So, para ma-extinguish mo yung obligation mo to prepare financial statement, gagawa ka ng financial statement. Nagkataon yung gagawin mong financial statement, gagamitin din ng management, stockholders mo, creditors mo, and other stakeholders. Yun po yun. So, ito po yung moral lesson. Gamitin yung tax code sa paggawa ng financial statement. Hindi ko kayo magkakaroon ng problem. Gamitin mo ang PFRS, magkakaroon ka ng reconciliation. Kukwestioning ka pa ngayon, bakit ka may reconciliation? Bakit magkaiba? Bakit ganito? So, doble yung trabaho. So, dapat po niyong gawin, e pag aralan ng tax code, mandated ho yan ang batas. Ang PFRS, hindi po. Ulitin ko, the rule of taxation must be uniform, equitable, and progressive. Pag gumamit kayo ng PFRS, hindi na siya uniform sa tax code. Hindi na siya equitable. Hindi na siya progressive. Pag-isipan nyo. Marami pong salamat. Mabuhay ang Pilipinas. Mabuhay ka, taxpayer.